<laughs> no, I've just I've never I don't deal with the slap message boards. I don't know. None what, of us do. No. Yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah. You don't like, have to. The slap message boards are home to over 40,000 skateboarding enthusiasts who've posted over 3.6 million times about 105,000 topics between the early 2000s to present day. Currently, about 8 new users are registered on slap per day, and the community generates a daily average of 630 posts covering 20 topics. Thanks to the forum's stat page, we know that 340 users log into Slap on the daily, and the male-to-female ratio is 18 to 1. 2007 was the most productive year in terms of new post volume in recorded history, with almost 323,000 new posts finding their way onto Slap's 26 total boards. And 2008 ranks first in terms of most new users registered on the site in a given year, with 5,800 pals creating Slap accounts. An investigation was conducted, but the case remains open as to why January 16th, 2020 holds the record for most slap users online simultaneously. Suggestions hinted that Jason Jesse's controversial past going public was the catalyst for nearly 1,900 pals flocking to the site, but the Nine Club interviewed him about those issues in early 2019. It is true that a thread originated about Jason Jesse and Andy Roy's affiliation with the skate brand Rollers California on January 16th, but there's nothing too significant in terms of post volume that indicates 1,900 people would want to gather around for that reason. Some of the more noteworthy skate YouTube events around that time included Beagle uploading his first episode of Beagle Tapes on the Hijinx YouTube channel on January 13th, 2020. Thrasher uploaded Masher Concrete Jungle on January 16th, 2020, a Sao Paulo DIY edit filmed by Chris Gregson, but at 162,000 views, it's hard to believe this video, while gnarly, would spark a need for a bulk-sized get-together on Slap. The Nine Club aired their 79th Experience episode on January 15th, where they covered Kyle Walker and Ishad Ware's Be Free, among other fairly tame topics, but this also doesn't hold up historically as a catalyst for a massive Slap congregation. Attempting to manually search for any historical threads that may indicate a juicy enough topic to entice over five and a half times the average amount of Slap users to log in wasn't very successful either. Checking the origin dates of both the top 10 topics by post volume and views reveals that they were all originated back in 2013 or earlier, and even a spot check of post volume on those historic topics on January 16th didn't point to anything worth writing home about. Unless there's a glaring detail I've overlooked, it seems that a random early afternoon on Thursday in mid-January 2020 just so happened to coincide with the slap boards experiencing its busiest day of online traffic ever. I don't know, man. In terms of size, Slap and its 40,000 members are about 8.5% as big as the skateboarding subreddit, the latter of which boasts 472,000 users and ranks amongst the top 1% of all subreddits as far as total users. Many reasons could explain the size difference, including the fact that you need to be registered on Slap via email, presumably by a real human moderator, before you're able to be considered a Slap member that can do anything besides lurk on the boards. Registering on Slap is more work than joining the skateboarding subreddit, where while you also need to sign up via email to become a Redditor, it's automatic and instant, and you simply click the join button on the skateboarding subreddit to, well, join. Slap's oldest data ranges back to November 21st, 2005, but Jenkum's interview with members of the forum indicate the message boards existed as far back as 2001, when it was created by John Tripp. It's important to note that the Slap online skateboarding forum is part of a bigger picture when talking about origin. Thrasher Magazine's co-founder Fausto Vitello and the publication's first editor Kevin Thatcher came up with the idea to create their own competing media entity in 1992, a little over a decade after Thrasher originated, and that competing magazine was called Slap, headed by Lance Dawes. The physical magazine version of Slap continued publication for 16 years, until the final issue was released in December 2008. While content from physical Slap magazine issues are not easily accessible, 
slap has definitely left an important cultural footprint online, even in areas outside of just the message boards. One in a Million was a skate contest series that evolved over a period of eight seasons. Archived details of the first five seasons are virtually non-existent, but bits and pieces of info on the message boards point out names like Tom Asta, Randy Plesser, Kevin Coakley, Paul Shire, and Jake Donnelly as notable participants in the contest. While the exact formula has changed over the years, the general structure of SLAP's one in a million contest was for unsponsored skaters to send in footage and a photo, which was reviewed by the SLAP staff and whittled down to around 10 finalists. Footage of the 10 finalists were shared with the SLAP community and votes were tallied to create a final five. Those five lucky skaters were flown to San Francisco, thrown in a van, taken to famous street spots for five days, filmed, and ultimately judged on their footage. Whoever won the one in a million contest was essentially guaranteed a sponsorship and tons of exposure to the industry. At least that I could find, it wasn't until season six that a fully narrated long form video of the contest made its way to YouTube, with Tom Karangalov coming out on top as the winner in 2009. Mark Whiteley, the editor-in-chief at SLAP, hosted this contest until bowing out of the final season in 2012. Season 7 is famous for the one-liners and heavy skating from Forrest Edwards. On some water, so feeling hydrated, feeling pumped. Oh no, I ate a fucking apple. You know, Reynolds eats fruit. And Chris Millick's quirky personality pre-frog. Did a 50-50 to nose manual, and then uh, shlugged it right off. Right off the king to bank. I feel great. Along with other notable figures like Nick Stain and eventual winner John Fitzgerald. It's clear that production value increased from season six to season seven, but season eight and the drama that ensued during that particular 2012 one in a million series would simultaneously make it the most viewed, but ultimately final contest. While seasons six and seven were competitions just like season eight, Whiteley kept the gang of finalists together throughout their time in the former seasons and waited until the last day to announce a winner. Whiteley not hosting season 8 was a significant departure from the show's tried and true recipe, and another major change included the implementation of daily eliminations for what is now the final season. Make it or break it this time, man. You got this. Oh. When Nate ollied it and Matt hit it, I, I really, it didn't click that, oh, this dude's gonna be out of here. The drama surrounding season eight is embedded in a combination of how the contest was edited and presented versus what actually happened. A Jenkum interview of several parties from that 2012 series suggests reality behind the scenes was different from the videos. Long story short, there was no winner from season eight and the contest finished with the judges stating that the skaters didn't comply with the rules of the show who eventually no longer agreed to be on camera, which brought the 2012 installment to an abrupt end. I saw all of you guys' footage for this whole week, and you guys produced a hell of a lot of video parts. But at the same time, I just gotta say that everybody really, at the end, really didn't come through. It's not just about skating, it's about more than that. And it's a show. You guys didn't allow the show to really happen. So being that as it was, it's done, and you guys all fly home tomorrow. The show's director, Alex Klein, made the executive decision to incorporate daily eliminations to season 8, because from his perspective, reproducing the lightning in a bottle captured through Forrest Edwards from season 7 was unlikely. So, in theory, the eliminations would ideally create easy suspense if the contestants were boring. Klein went into detail on a lot of behind-the-scenes information with Jenkum, but in a nutshell insisted that the show ended shorter than planned because the contestants didn't want to be on camera. One of the season 8 videographers, Colin Reed, said in an interview also with Jenkum, that Alex was overbearing in his control of the contestants' schedules, that the eliminations bummed everyone out, the HD filmers weren't considerate of the skaters, and because of these reasons, the kids had nothing to do with the failure of the show. Four of the contestants unanimously agreed that Alex's claims about the show being a parody of reality TV was not the case, and that, on the contrary, Klein was serious about manufacturing drama and attempting to undermine the camaraderie between the skaters. While episodes of the show did generate an unfavorable dislike-to-like ratio on the Ride channel, 
It's undeniable that One in a Million 2012 also generated a lot of views and discussion, albeit for the wrong reasons. Many layers of what core skaters would consider to be aligned with the true spirit of skateboarding that was captured in the 6th and 7th seasons with Mark Whiteley was voluntarily and in hindsight erroneously stripped away from season 8 by Alex Klein, leaving most if not the entirety of slap posters furious. Season 8 included focusing boards after each elimination, fake bullying from the judges, confrontational filmers who didn't skate, and unbelievably pointless challenges, the last of which included the remaining contestants pushing around a city block with an empty pizza box, all the while having a GoPro begrudgingly strapped to the skater's heads during what could only be assumed was a simulation of a pizza delivery? While it's disappointing to see such a promising, entertaining skateboarding slash reality contest hybrid that you can even watch with a partner who doesn't necessarily skate, go the way of the dodo, even more tragic is that one of the 2012 contestants, Naperville, Illinois native Josh Kaznicka, passed away in 2016 at only 21 years old. In addition to One in a Million, a Slap Pals Questions YouTube channel popped up in February 2019, uploading unofficial video interviews of skaters and industry figures responding to questions from the message boards. Similar to One in a Million, older iterations of Pals Questions appear to date back as early as 2013, and the origin of the format might derive from a poll by moderator Grim City asking Pals how they want to approach pro interviews back in 2008. The 39 uploads on the Slap Pals YouTube channel spanned a time range of one year and eight months, starting with former Weekend Buzz host Rob Brink and ending with former Illegal Civ Pro Kevin White. Mark Suchu's episode was the most popular upload, drawing 63,000 views. Slap Magazine's physical publication, the One in a Million contest, and the unofficial Slap Pals questions videos may have fizzled out, but the message boards have been running strong for over two decades. The most popular topic on the Slap message boards, both in views and post volume, is regarding upcoming and recent shoe releases. The shoe thread, which originated in September 22, 2010, has since generated 8.1 million views and over 48,000 posts. The second most viewed thread on Slap is about board setups, and while post volume is relatively close to the previously mentioned shoe post at 44,000, views on the board setup post are half as high as shoes, with only 4.4 million. The remaining top 10 posts by volume and views are a combination of topics that range from more shoes, specifically Nike SB related, a gear thread, and general humor along with things you are stoked on and things you are not stoked on. As far as slap pals are concerned, Bubblegum Tate is the overwhelming leader in most topics started, with nearly 2,200 under his belt, two of which are in the top 10 post rankings, and notably, the overall most viewed topic about shoe releases was originated by Bubblegum. Slap pal Heckler might rank second in terms of most topics started at 731, but he currently holds the record for most time spent on the boards, message boards that is, clocking in at 587 days, 9 hours, and 11 minutes. That amount of time equates to 1.6 years, but if this statistic takes into account idle time, it could be less alarming for how much time Heckler spent on slap, considering you can walk away from the forum while still logged in and accumulate time spent quote-unquote online. Heckler, whose last login was back in 2021, was reportedly banned from Slap around that time, and one of the mods, Alan, posted that the ban was due to transphobia. Unlike Heckler, sneakerhead user Bubblegum Tate remains active on Slap to this day, with over 3.6 million posts by 40,000 users covering 105,000 topics. The Slap message boards are a jungle of interesting archived conversations between skateboarding enthusiasts that have, for the most part, self-governed themselves for over 20 years. Some key threads that come to mind from my personal experience lurking on the boards include a juicy topic started by a guest user known as Links, Picks, and Quotes back in mid-2019 about beef between Nora Vasconcelos and Lizzie Armanto. 
Lynx provided evidence of Nora indirectly bashing Lizzie for representing Finland at the Olympics on the technicality that she has family there, but was born in America, and it's no secret that Vasconcelos did not make the U.S. Olympic team. More information highlighted that Nora felt salty about her lavender-themed products getting allegedly copied by Lizzie, and some IG follow slash unfollow drama was screenshotted, basically showing that Lizzie and Nora follow most household female figures in the skate community, but not each other. The Nora vs. Lizzie thread quickly took off on Slap, with OP highlighting that Axel Kreisberg's romantic involvement with Armanto could have been fanning the flames of the drama, indicating Vasconcelos might have been jealous of the couple. One slap user, Monkey McPot, managed to call in on the Nine Club on the 100k sub celebration experience episode 48, which turned into a 15 minute back and forth about the problems with slap trolls spoiling the message board's reputation. But would you guys ever do like a slap pals question? No. Like the one Brink did? No. No. Uh, I mean, it's just um, not our steez. Like, I, I mean, we're no, in, we're into like big, I mean, we're into like high production you know. and stuff. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> that audio is kind of bad and they just kind of like set up no, the camera. Not, so, that you know, slap gets a really bad rap and I get that because it's not, it's like a lot of skate nerds in there, but it's a lot of trolls too. So a lot of times like the trolls overshadow, like the people that are actually on there, like talking like real. I was going to say, yeah. Stenchins, yeah. Oh, let me tell you something, bro. Okay. Slap. Yeah. Yeah. There are good people on there, but then there's a lot of bullshit on there, you know? And I think what you're oh, saying no, is course, true. The course. trolls do overtake the topics. Yeah, yeah, like there's other threads on Slap, like, you know, photos and videos, like... Or right. Jesus know, Christ is a racist just, and know, an idiot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, all I... All I, nah, that, all was, I that was like... I think the only problem I have no, with Slap was, is like, dude... Show you're your not face. Skateboard. You know, show your face, dude. You ain't gonna say that with... No, no. Like, you... No, me, like, I mean, I... But 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 here's do the thing whatever, though is like do whatever you what, guys, like you said it's your show you know what I mean yeah I know <laughs> so in conclusion does slap add value to skateboarding I would say it's a net positive to have a central hub for the core skate community to gather and discuss skateboarding related topics with the freedom to express an opinion good or bad as long as no one's personal lives and well-being are negatively affected at least from what i've come across the message boards are the only entity tied to slap that survived the test of time not much info is available on the details but thrasher's parent company high speed productions includes slap on its website of companies it makes sense that high speed might not need two physical skateboarding magazines published but the consistent online activity via the slap message boards suggests that the means of Fausto and Kevin unnecessarily manufacturing their own competition to Thrasher ended up justifying the end result, a platform that offers plywood pushers to have digital discussions about skateboarding with minimal interference from moderators. Whether or not you believe slap message boards are good for skateboarding, it's undeniable that the Barracks has heard loud and clear that Jeff DeCesare needs to be in battle at the Barracks 13. Jeff Wansong himself has declared on a Barracks hard post that he should be a contender. And no less than 170 likes back up the double flipping Huckers declaration. But back to Slap though, it's pretty sad that like a large part of that whole message board thing, mm -hmm. people are just bashing people. Yeah. Of it's like, yeah. dude, why are you wasting your time? Like, it doesn't help skateboarding at all. Nah. Like, stop. Yeah. Like, That's where they go to get that shit out. If that makes them feel better, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Like, whatever. But yeah, it just, like, it's very Slap is the most negative thing in skateboarding. Yeah. 